Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get my camera adjusted a little bit. So we are working on some five, six notes today. So we've been doing kind of the same thing with five, five, and we're going to do some more in five, six, but we've noticed that there's some crazy different directions. So I just kind of wanted to take a little minute and make sure that you know what to do when you encounter different directions. So it's really important on your assignment to read the directions and make sure that you read the question so you know what you're being asked to do. So one of the things that you can be asked to do is find the possible rational roots. So when it says this word possible rational roots, what you are going to do is you are going to find the factors of the constant and you are going to divide that by the factors of the leading coefficient. And then you are going to take your list and split it um, and make your little plus minus whatever, plus minus whatever, plus minus whatever, etc., etc. Okay, so this list would be the possible. So remember if this is like a one, then on Math Excel you might have to say one negative one, and this was like a two, you might have to say two negative two, okay, etc. So if it says possible, that's what you're doing. Then next, if it says number of roots, possible number of roots, or number of complex roots, so anytime you see this number of, number of, to do that, this is the easy one. You just look at the degree of your polynomial and type it in because that's your answer. Done. Look at the degree, type it in. Next, how many positive real roots and how many negative real roots? So for positive real roots, you are going to use f of x, or exactly what the problem says. You're going to use exactly what the problem says, and the answer is the number of sign changes. So the number of times it goes from plus to minus and backwards. Now remember, it's not just the number of sign changes. You start with the number of sign changes, and then you take that number and subtract 2, and subtract 4, and subtract 6, um, or anything else until you get to zero or a negative. So let's say, for example, when I counted the sign changes, I got, um, let's just say five. So my answer would be five, three, or one. Because it was five, then I subtracted two, then I subtracted four, but if I subtracted six, I would get negative one, well, there's no way to have negative numbers of roots, so since I got to one, I would have just stopped. Okay, the next one is the same type of thing, but for negative roots, we need to use f of negative x. And this is where we talk about if the degree is odd, it will change its sign. If the degree is even, we will keep its sign. Okay, but then this is still the number of sign changes. But on this one, it's from f of negative x. And then same thing, you take your number and subtract 2 or subtract 4 until you get to 0 or a negative number. 0, you would still work. So let's say, for example, this one we got 2. So we'd go 2, then we'd subtract 2 and get 0. And we wouldn't subtract 4 because that would give us a negative number. So we would be done. Okay, so that's an example of those types. Now, here is where the big dogs come out to play. So if it says find the actual roots, all roots, all zeros, all complex zeros, actual zeros, find the roots, any of those things, that's when you have to do the whole thing. So you make your list, like we talked about up there, the possible rational roots where we have factors of the constant over factors of the leading coefficient. So we'd make our list like this. And then after we make our list, where are we at? After we make our list, we would test. Remember you test, um, that's not a word, using synthetic division 
test using synthetic division. Okay, well, Mrs. Black, I tested a bunch. How do I know when I'm right? You know you found a root or you found a zero when the remainder is zero. If the remainder is anything other than zero, it's not a root. Um, after we list and test and find one that gives us a zero, we rewrite our polynomial and then use the new polynomial to repeat that whole process. And we go on and on and on and on and on. But we get to stop. We get to stop when the quotient or our new polynomial is quadratic. Now remember quadratic is when we have the biggest thing is x squared. And once that happens, then we can use the quadratic formula or we can factor. Now sometimes it will factor. If the roots are real and nice numbers, it will factor. If the roots are imaginary or, um, so if they're complex, so that would be imaginary or irrational, you would have to use quadratic formula. So you can attempt to factor, that's the AC method, but if it doesn't work, then you're gonna have to use quadratic formula. Okay, so let's do one. Here is our example. So find all complex roots, or maybe solve, same thing, okay? So how many roots are there? Well, let's look. So if I look at my degree, my degree is four. So there are four roots. So they're gonna be x equals, and I know I'm gonna have one, two, three, four of them. Okay, four of them, nice. So, um, real quick, I want to figure out how many positives and how many negatives I would have. So my positive roots, I count the sign changes. So since these are the same problems, I can use either one. I'm going to use this one since it's closer. Positive to a negative, that's a sign change. Negative to a negative, not a sign change. So one um, positive root. How many negative roots? Well, in this one, I'm going to count the sign changes, but I'm going to do it for f of negative x. So if I put negative x in here, this is an even power, so it would stay how it is. If I put negative x in here, this is also an even power, so it would stay how it is. Um, and this doesn't have an x. Oh, so I guess nothing changed. So there's going to be one positive root and one negative root. So when I make my list, I'm going to keep that in mind one positive number and one negative number. So if I test a negative and I get it, I pr probably should move on to positives. So let's make our list. So we need the um, factors of, okay, so list possible roots. We need our factors of our constant. So the constant is the one without an X divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, so the factors of four and the factors of one. So the factors of four are four, two, what am I doing? Let's do this in order, Mrs. Black. Factors of four, one, two, and four. Factors of one, one. So my list is gonna be plus minus one, plus minus two, and plus minus four. So now let's pick something to test. Um, so I've got one, negative one, two, negative two, four, negative four. So let's pick, I'm gonna start with negative numbers. Let's pick negative one. So in my box, I'm gonna pick negative one, put it in my box. And then we need to do the um, leading or the coefficients of my polynomial. So my polynomial here, I've got a coefficient of one in front of the x to the fourth. How many x to the thirds do I have? Zero, so I put in a placeholder. Negative three x squareds. How many x's do I have? Zero. And negative four for my constant term. Okay, then to do synthetic division, we drop it, multiply, 
add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and I get negative six. So is that helpful? Well, not exactly. Okay, so if once we get to this, and we're going to in a minute, in a few lessons, negative one six is actually a point on the graph. So don't like completely cross this off because we will use it next time. But we can cross off negative one because that didn't work. So let's pick another one. Um, let's pick negative two. So we'll put negative two in the box. And same thing, one, zero, negative three, zero, negative four. Okay, so I've got one, negative two, negative two, positive four, one, negative two, negative two, multiply, four, zero, yes. Okay, so why am I excited? Well, I'm excited because when this gives me a remainder of zero, That means that I found a root. Hooray! So I'm going to take negative two and put it up here on my list of roots. Um, and now I don't know about y'all, but I'm out of room. So flip it. Um, so next, I since I found my root, I need to rewrite this shindig now. So I've got f of x equals. Now my root, my root was x equals negative 2. So to write that as a factor, it's going to be x plus 2. Okay, then I also need to rewrite, I need this just a second. Let's see if I can get these both on here. Okay, so now our new problem is right here. This is our new problem. We're going to use the answer from our synthetic division. Okay, so remember it's re remainder, number, x, x squared, x to the third, etc. So I've got x to the third minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so now again we make our list. So our list, um, and you might notice our list of possible roots is going to be the factors of 2, so 1 and 2, over the factors of 1. So when I split it, it's going to be plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. So notice I had 1, 2, and 4, but now I only have 1 and 2, so this is making this easier for me. So negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. Um, I already tested, let's see, I already tested negative 1. And um, I already tested negative 2, but I'm going to leave it on because it could have a multiplicity. But actually, when I was doing this over here, and I learned that there's one positive and one negative, and I already tested a couple negative numbers, I think I'm going to switch to positive numbers right now. So let's test. Let's test 1. So if I put 1 in my box, and now I'm using this problem, so my coefficient line is 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2. So drop, add, multiply, add, multiply. Okay, well that didn't work. All right, so let's test again. Since 1 doesn't work, let's cross that off. Let's test um, positive 2. So if I put positive 2 in my box, 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2. Hey, look, another root. Hooray. Happy face. A root. So I can grab my, um, flip it over, back over here. So my second root that I found is 2. Hooray. So when I rewrite this, I have f of x equals, from my other page I found x plus 2. Now this one was 2, so as a factor we set it equal to 0, so it's x minus 2. 
Now my problem is this. This is my new problem. So now I have x squared plus 0x plus 1. So now I can take this thing, and since it's x squared, I need to either do the quadratic formula or I could factor. So quadratic formula or factor. Once you have the x down to squared, quadratic formula or factor. So what I am noticing um, is that this is actually factorable. Since this is f squared plus l squared, it's a sum of squares, which factors as f plus l with an i and f minus l with an i, um, I'm actually going to factor it that way. So when I rewrite this, f of x, I have x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then this, let's figure this out. OK, so if x squared is f, what times itself gives me x squared? So it tells me f is just going to be x, x and x. One gets a plus, one gets a minus, and then this is L, so L gets an I, but this is L squared. So what's the square root of one? Well, it's still one. So this is one I and minus one I, and you can put the I there if you want. But real quick, just so I can have it, on the other side I have negative two, two, so what would be the root here? Well, we set it equal to zero and find out that x equals negative i. And here we set this one equal to zero and find out that x equals positive i. And remember, since those have i's, they should come as conjugate pairs. So we have i and negative i. And those are my roots. So my roots, if I'm going to type this into Math Excel, negative 2, 2, i, and negative i. So that's how you do these, these ones. So let me show one more um, way to do this one. So that was one way, but sometimes, sometimes these are set up nicely, and we can use the AC method to factor. So let's see if it works for this one. And hopefully you obviously know that it does, since I'm showing you in your notes, but it doesn't always. So if we want to factor this, we do A times C. So we do x to the fourth times negative four. We would get negative four x squared. Then to factor, well, first we should have looked for a GCF. There's not one. So we do a times c. So we got one x and four x, two x and two x. However, one times four doesn't give me negative four, and neither does that. So I know I need one of them to be negative. I know they need to add to give me the middle term. So this is the sign of the larger number. So it's going to be negative 4 and negative 2. Now do either one of these give me negative 3x squared? Um, yeah, they sure do. Um, one at, oh, no they don't. Time out. Mrs. Black made a mistake. See how this says x to the fourth? Yeah, this should say x to the fourth also. So when we're doing this, these both get squared because they share the number of x's nicely. So you divide whatever this is, you divide it by 2, and they each get that many. So now I'm looking for negative 3x squared. Now these give me negative 3x squared. OK. So when I'm doing this, I by AC method, I keep the first term. This middle term splits to be these two. So x squared minus 4x squared. And then I keep the last term. Okay, now I split these up into pairs. So let's look at these two pairs and see if they have anything in common. So looking at just those two, it looks like I see that they both have an x squared in column, common. So I can factor out an x squared. x to the fourth divided by x squared. Well, when we are dividing um, and we have exponents, we subtract them. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 
x squared divided by x squared. Well, anything divided by itself is 1. Next over here, if I look and go negative 4x squared and negative 4, what do those have in common? Well, I can divide them both by negative 4. X squared, negative 4x squared divided by negative 4 is x squared. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. So then if I continue on in my factoring process, I take the two things that I factored out and put it in one set of parentheses, and the things that I had left and put it in another parentheses. Remember to make sure that those two match. And then if I check this out, this is a difference of squares. And this over here happens to be a sum of squares. So if you don't remember how to do those, you can look back at your 4, 4, B notes. Okay, so up here I did sum of squares, and that's how it factors. Difference of squares factors the same way, but without the I. But if you want to look a little bit more intent, intensely, um, you could look at your 4, 4, B notes. So how this is going to factor is... What's the square root of x squared? The square root of x squared is x. It's 1 plus and 1 minus. What's the square root of 4? 2. And then this one we actually already factored, but we're going to work through it again. What times itself gives you x squared? 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. What times itself gives you 1? Well, that's 1. But since it says sum, it's going to get an i, 1i and negative 1i. So you can put the 1 in front of them if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, so last but not least, what are your roots then? Well, the root here is negative 2. The root here is 2. The root here is negative i, and the root here is positive i. So if you notice, that was quite a bit faster than the list test repeat way. However, it only sometimes works. So it only works to factor if the problem does factor and they don't all factor. So if you see something that is x to the fourth, you might check it out, x to the fourth or x squared and see if it factors. Um, but if it doesn't factor, you have to do the whole list test rewrite thing. All right, good luck. Let us know if you have any questions.